Hey everybody, it is time to finally tackle number 53. Uh, probably what I would consider to be one of the most difficult optimization problems that you'll encounter in this class. Um, so, we are being asked to find the coordinates of the point P on the curve, y equals 1 over x squared, uh, where the segment of the tangent line at P that is cut off by the coordinate axis has the shortest length. Okay, before we spin out of control and not understand what this is saying, Basically, all they're saying is that we want to place a point P anywhere on this curve. So let's say right here. If I place point P right there, I want to be able to draw a tangent line right there that will intersect both axes, but they say both coordinate axes, and I want that distance to be minimized. So hopefully it makes sense that at some point during the scope of this problem, we are going to bust out our distance formula. So let's just get it in, the, in our back pocket before we move on. Uh, distance equals the square root of x1 minus x2 quantity squared plus y1 minus y2 same quantity squared. And of course I know I'm going to square both sides, but right now we're just keeping the distance formula in our back pocket. Okay, so in order to find the equation of a tangent line, I need some coordinates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create some coordinates for P because they haven't given me, give me anything. So I'm going to call the X coordinate of P, I'm going to call it X naught. And then I'm going to go ahead and find the Y coordinate, which is not actually going to be Y naught. Uh, the way we find Y coordinates given X coordinates is we plug that X coordinate into the original function. So if I take X naught and plug it in for X, I'm going to get X naught comma 1 over x not squared. So again, it's just an x coordinate and a y coordinate, and that's all I've done. I'm doing this because eventually I'm going to want to find the equation of the line, because they're asking me for the segment of a tangent line right here. And hopefully it makes sense that whatever tangent line that I find is eventually going to cross both axes, so I'm going to minimize that line. So for that I need some x, y coordinates. So I found them. From here, we're talking about tangent lines. Tangent lines talk about derivatives, and derivative is slope. So I have to take the derivative of this thing, so y prime is going to be, if, if I see this as x to the negative 2, this is really negative 2x to the negative 3. Okay? And so the slope, after I simplify it, is going to be y prime is equal to negative 2 over x cubed. Now that is my slope anywhere on this curve. But here's the thing. I don't want the slope anywhere on the curve, and this arm's right, this is a 2. I don't want the slope anywhere on the curve, I want the slope here at point P. Well, the x coordinate of that slope is going to be y prime of x naught, which means I really just replace uh, the x cubed with x naught. So really, my slope is going to be negative 2 over x naught cubed. And that is my slope of the line at point P. So now I'm ready to put this in point slope form. Point slope form is going to be y minus y sub 1. In this case, that'll be 1 over x naught squared is equal to m, which is negative 2 over x naught cubed, times x minus x sub 1, in this case, x sub 1 is x naught. Now, I've put it in point slope form, I have the equation of the line, I have found the equation of this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out what the y-intercept is, because the y-intercept is going to give me this dot right here. And remember, this dot and this dot are the ones that I'm going to try to minimize. So I need to find a y-intercept. So the only way I can do that would be to bring back an old friend and put this back in slope-intercept form. Remember that from Algebra 1. I can say that y minus 1 over x, uh, x naught squared is going to equal negative 2 uh, x over x naught cubed minus, or rather plus, sorry, 2 x naught over x naught cubed. Now I can simplify this expression. I can cancel out the x naught and the x naught cubed. That's going to give me 
y minus 1 over x naught squared is equal to negative 2x over x naught cubed plus 2 over x naught squared. Now that has put me in a very good position here because now I can kick this 1 over x naught squared over and not have a problem. So what I've got here really is y equals in mx plus b form negative 2x over x naught cubed plus 3 over x naught squared. So eye on the prize. I know we've done a lot of math and, it's, and there's a lot of symbol manipulation, but keep your eye on the prize. What we just found was the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 0, 3 over x naught squared. That's going to help us because once we find the x and y intercepts, then we can proceed to minimize the distance between them. Hit the pause button if you have to, and I'm going to go ahead and erase this point slope form stuff. Um, and then we'll move on. Okay, we are back. Last time we were together, there was some stuff going on up in here. If you have to hit the rewind button to, to see it all again. Uh, I have now cleaned it all up. Remember, we have just found the y-intercept. Now we have to go back and find the x-intercept. X-intercepts are found when we set y equal to 0. So I've got y, a 0 equaling negative 2 over 3. Not 2 over 3, sorry. Uh, negative 2 over x naught cubed x plus 3 over x naught squared. So I can go ahead and solve for x by cross-multiplying, or rather adding the stuff over. So 2 over x naught cubed is equal to 3 over x naught squared. I can cross-multiply. Keep your eye on the prize. Uh, sorry, we are solving for x naught x naught, and that should be a 2x up there. So what I've got is I've got 2x x naught squared is equal to 3 x naught cubed. Remember, we're trying to get x by itself. I'll even highlight it in a different color here. We're trying to get x by itself, not x naught, x. x naught and x, x naught cubed, those are all constants. So we're just going to get rid of them. 2 x naught squared from both sides. So goodbye, goodbye. So x is going to equal, if I have x naught cubed over x naught squared, does it make sense that I have x naught to the first power? And then 3 divided by 2 is 3 over 2. So that is my x-coordinate. Now, keep in mind, we just found the x-intercept of this thing. So this is going to be 3 over 2, x naught, comma, 0. Okay, check it out, everybody. Let's just summarize what we did. We found the equation for the line. We found the y-intercept. We found the x-intercept. Now that we have two coordinates that are definitively, we know where they are, we can now optimize this function. So hit the pause button if you have to. I need to erase some stuff. Okay, we are back, and we need to now optimize the distance between our two points found. The two points found, just in case you forgot, are the x and y-intercepts. The x-intercept being 0, 3 over x squared naught, uh, and then... 3 over 2 x naught comma 0 for our x coordinate. So we are going to now optimize that distance. Now before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and say that d squared is equal to x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 quantity squared. Now you don't have to do this, but I find it less painful than chain rule. Um, so let's go ahead and plug in the things that we have. If I try to optimize the distance here, then I have d squared is going to equal. Well, if I take my x coordinates and I try to find the distances between them, I have 3 over 2 x naught um, minus 0. So that's just going to be 3 over 2 x naught squared because minus 0 is going to give me nothing. And I'm going to add 3 over x, x naught squared minus 0, that's the same thing as 3 over x naught squared squared. So I'm going to go and simplify this all out. d squared is going to equal 9 over 4 x naught squared plus 9 over x naught 
to the fourth. Now, before I take the derivative, I should probably rewrite this as, whoops, 9 over 4 x naught squared plus 9 x naught to the negative 4. That'll just help take the derivative. That'll help taking the derivative, making it easier. So I'm going to go ahead and derive this thing and look for a minimum because I want to minimize the distance between those two points. So I've got d uh, squared prime is going to equal, if I take the derivative of the first part or the first part right here, I'm going to get 9 over 2x naught plus, or in this case, I'm sorry, minus, looks like we're going to get 36 x naught to the negative 5. So from here, there's a number of things you can do. You can, you can factor out a 9, and you can factor out an x naught to the negative 5. If you do that, what you'll end up with is 1 half x naught to the 6th power minus 4. Now from here, this thing here, whoops, this thing here will equal, will be undefined at zero, so that's going to qualify as a critical number. If you do the math here, if you get, if you set one half x to the sixth minus four equal to zero, here's what happens. One half x to the sixth minus four equals zero, so one half x to the sixth equals four. Uh, x to the 6th equals 8. Now here's what the book did to get their rad 2 answer. What they did was they saw x to the 6th, and what they did was they took the cube root of it, both sides. So we know that the cube root of x to the 6th is going to be x squared, and we know that the cube root of 8 is 2, and then x ended up being plus or minus root 2. Now, I know that the negative version is not going to come up because we're only dealing when x is greater than 0. But uh, for those of us who like the mechanics of the sign chart, it'll event I'll eventually just cross it off. x to the fifth. This x to the fifth function, or x naught to the fifth, is going to stay negative until 0. The x to the sixth minus 4, 1 half x to the sixth minus 4. Well, this is a right side up parabola that's going to be positive on its wings and negative on its insides. Now, my final intervals are going to be negative, positive, negative, positive. Now, before we move any further, remember, this graph is only for x is greater than 0. So I can actually forget about all of this garbage that's happening before 0. All I care about is that before rad 2, my function was negative. After rad 2, it was positive, which means I have a min right there. You would say in this case that you have a min, the minimum distance happens, you know what, my handwriting sloppy, hold on for a second. Okay, now that I've got some decent uh, text right here, uh, the minimum distance happens when x, it should be x naught equals rad 2, and what I would do is I would take this and I would plug it back into the y equals mx plus b version of your of your uh, function, and you will get when y, equal, when y equals 1 half. Okay, bit of a bear, but um, hopefully it's a little understandable. Uh, hopefully, yeah, you'll have questions when we come in. And here we go for the grand finale of number 55. They're asking us where on the curve this thing, does the tangent line have the greatest slope? In this case, when we talk about tangent lines and having the greatest slope where slope is increasing or decreasing the fastest, we're talking about second derivative. Let's go ahead and derive this thing twice. y prime is going to equal negative 1 times 1 plus x squared to the negative 2 times 2x. And then if we take the derivative one more time, I'm going to, actually, I'm going to call this negative 
1 plus x squared to the negative 2 times 2x. Now I'm going to use product rule for the second one, so y double prime is going to be the first unchanged times the derivative of the second plus the second unchanged times the derivative of the first. Now the derivative of the first, the negatives are going to cancel each other out, so I get a 2 here, and then I get 1 plus x squared to the negative 3 times 2x. So let me clean this up a little bit. That way we can factor out and make this thing a little more analyzable. This is negative 2 times 1 plus x squared to the negative 2. Uh, looks like this is plus 8, 8 x squared times 1 plus x squared to the negative 3. Now, we can start factoring things out to make this more analyzable. I can factor out a negative 2. If I factor out a negative 2, I can also factor out a 1 plus x squared to the negative 3. Now, that leaves me on the inside with a 1 here, and it leaves me with a 1 plus x squared. Now, if I factor out a 2 from here, I get, and it's negative, so this thing's going to go from positive to negative, and it looks like I'm going to get a 4x squared. Now, the 1 plus x squared to the negative 3 factored completely out, so it's gone. I can clean up the inside here, so y double prime ultimately equals negative 2, parentheses, 1 plus x squared to the negative 3 times, uh, I'm going to get 1 minus 3x squared, Okay, and then finally, if you really wanted to clean this up just one step further, y double prime could ultimately equal negative 2 times 1 minus 3x squared all over 1 plus x squared cubed. The good thing is that the bottom produces no critical numbers. Only the top does. So what I've got is I've got critical numbers. At, I'll let you guys do the math, negative 2 will never equal 0, but this will equal 0 at negative 1 over root 3 and 1 over root 3. Now, this is an upside down parabola, so it always goes negative, positive, negative. Negative, positive, negative. But this symbol here, this negative 2, is always negative. So really, it's the right side up parabola that goes positive, negative, positive. You want to find out where this thing hits its greatest slope. Remember, this is the sign chart for the second derivative. It maxes out here, which means that your maximum slope occurs at negative 1 over rad 3. Remember to justify all of your work and explain all of it in words, and we will see you next time.